This week's review is about to tick more boxes than you can point a stick at. It's budget. It's a springer. It's suitable for all ages. Practical and accurate. Well, we'll check that one out later. The Diana 240. Welcome to AAR on Air, and today is a review that will hopefully satisfy a few of those comments of You don't review budget guns, or what about the young shooters, and why don't you do springers? Well, those of you who will watch the channel on a regular basis will know I do try to balance out all different price ranges and types. Though I must say that not many manufacturers out there are producing as many new springers as they do PCPs. So, there is bound to be a little more bias towards the PCP. But, if I get a Springer, I will definitely give it a go. So, on with the Diana 240, which is designed by Diana in Germany, apparently. But, as I'm sure you know, like your smartphone, iPad and most everything else in your house and life, is made in China. So, is it Apple quality, or more a use once and throw away item? Walk around in stats first. It is 1,020mm or 40.2 inches long, with a precision steel rifled barrel, which is 420mm or 16.5 inches. It tips the scales at a lighter weight 2.72 kilograms, or around 6 pounds. And it's available in... 177 caliber. Now, to give you an idea of who this is intended for, it is designed to have a maximum power of around 7.5 joules, which is only six foot pounds. Now, this is likely to see around the 500 feet per second figures in a 177 caliber, which isn't too much different to shooting a 2.2 in sub 12 foot pounds so it should have some reasonable accuracy without having too much power to do too much harm so not really intended as a pest control tool at that power level more the target or plinking tool to bring the younger generation into the sport and at this power level it should be enough to keep them interested and enough power to let the adults have a bit of fun too. Blimey, something for all the family? At this rate, we'll be giving shooting a good name. <laughs> Looking at the gun, my first impressions are quality, tradition and nostalgia. The quality of this is really very good. The stock looks like walnut in coloration, but it's most likely going to be beech. And it is very smooth and finished off to a high quality, with no rough edges or sharp corners anywhere. There are no marks or telltale signs of mass production on a high speed scale, regardless of quality. Really, it is quite impressive. There is no stippling for grip, either on the forestock or the grip itself. Just a really nice piece of wood, which is finished off with a rubberized butt pad. From the front, that rifle barrel is not threaded for a silencer, just a fiber optic, fiber optic foresight, which then matches up with the fully adjustable fiber optic again rear. These adjustments include elevation and windage via a simple click wheel system, which couldn't be simpler. There is a dovetail rail on the top to be able to fit a scope if you prefer, which would help improve the accuracy, I'm sure, certainly for me, and gives that feel of having a much more expensive rifle and a more glamorous entry into the sport. To the rear of this is the automatic safety, which is applied each time you cock the gun and break the barrel, and will require pushing forward into fire before taking each and every shot. This helps keep the whole thing safer for the younger shooter, or less experienced shooter. 
Again, no bad thing in my books. It is possible to apply this manually, if you want, between shots. The trigger is a two-stage item, and I must say it is more perfectly adequate than precision target rifle pull. It is a little on the heavier side, but without being ridiculous. Let's not forget this is a budget gun, and a stiffer trigger for a junior is much better than a super light hair trigger that could go off when they weren't ready. So, again, stiffer trigger gets my vote on this one. Because of that lower power, it is pretty easy to cock this one and doesn't need one of the Hemsworth brothers to do it for you. It is single shot that goes directly into the rear of the barrel. At this point, it's worth noting for any new starters that this is, that this is sorry a pellet gun and not a BB gun. The barrel is rifled and as such needs lead projectiles to prevent the rifling becoming damaged. Don't be tempted to drop BBs or those darts into it. They will damage the barrel. Let's get this over the chronograph then, shall we, and check out how close it is to the claimed six foot pound power output. Now I decided to use standard 8.44 grain weighted pellets and it saw a maximum of 517 feet per second, which is just five foot pounds or around 6.8 joules, which whilst not being the six foot pound claimed, is still more than enough power for its intended use, which is a junior starter rifle. And as such, is going to be that bit safer. So I'm not too upset about those figures at all. Well, with that sorted, time to get this out on the range to see what it can do. I think around 20 metres is about the right distance to stretch it a little, but give it a fighting chance. Again, using the 8.44 grain pellets. Open sights. <laughs> Here goes. Spring of time again. In spring. Nice. Uh, yeah, junior gun. 240. I'm not quite sure why 240. Nope, can't think of it. Please, if you know, send it in. Let me know. Um, Diana, designed in Germany. And yes, it's made in China, but actually the quality is superb. It feels lovely. No sharp edges anywhere at all. Really, really nice. Open sights, but there is a rail to be able to drop a scope on. And I'd recommend probably a bit of a budget scope. It just makes it feel better. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to try open sights. This is taking me back a few years and uh, see how we go. Not too far, stretch it out to 20 metres on this one. Uh, it is a low powered gun and safer for it as well. Nice little junior starter. Shall we have a go? Automatic safety, always nice. can't see the uh, target. Fire a few shots off and then we'll go and have a look, shall we? It's really very smooth, the action on it. I mean, it's just over a hundred pounds. You've got adjustable sights. You've got this beautiful feel. It really does fit. It feels way more expensive. It's either missing completely or it's all in the black. Cause I just can't see from here. Quite enjoying this.
automatic safety. Let's go and have a look, shall we? See what the damage is. Now, apart from one, that's quite a nice little grouping. That's six shots taken off, five of which are all in quite a small space, size of 10p piece, I suppose, which is beer bottle top. Uh, one gone off. I really, all I can see is a blur of the black from the sights. So the gun is very capable, more capable than I am with my eyesight. Personally, I'd put a little scope on it. It doesn't have to be an expensive scope, but I would get hold of a little scope, either three to nine or something like that, pop it on, and that group in them will come way, way tighter because I'll be able to see what I was doing. It really is a nice little piece. Let's let's put it to the test of what I think it would get used for most of the time. That is a bit of tin can shooting. Let's give it a go. Tin cans then. Same distance. I've weighted them down with water as well, so I've filled them up. So they may not ricochet off everywhere, but let's have a go. What are we doing with those? a hit <laughs> oh this is taking me back talk about nostalgia that's how every young shooter should start On a nice sunny day like this, what better than to reminisce, take you back, shoot a little. Still cool, it's not cold. Yes. I like it. I really do. What a cracking little starter gun. Now that... As I say, takes me back, it's nostalgia, but that is one nicely made piece to actually start your kids off. Can I say kids these days? The younger generation. Get them away from the Xboxes or whatever it is, and I don't suppose that costs much more than an Xbox game. I've no idea how much they do cost, and I don't even know if it's Xbox nowadays. I don't do them, never have. But why do we shoot upon a game when you can actually get out in the fresh air and shoot away to your heart's content? Put some chalk targets up, put some tins up, whatever. Great fun, great fun. I like it. Now, I've never professed to be a springer shooter, and I really struggle with open sights. But looking at those results with one flyer out, six rounds, one off shot. I really don't think that's bad at all. Easily accurate enough to keep the younger shooter interested. Well, to summarise, this is definitely more Apple quality than ever it is use once and throw away in terms of quality. At less than £110, it is definitely low cost and probably as cheap as one of those games for their games consoles. I'm assuming, I don't know games, I'm afraid, I prefer to be out shooting real guns rather than doing it on a TV screen. It is very much a traditional rifle, and to me, that's a major plus. And yes, it brings back a whole wave of nostalgia, taking me back to the days of my first Springer rifle and sharing the time with my dad on the back garden. Downside? Yeah, it's louder than a silenced PCP, naturally, but not overly loud at that power level. And being a springer, there will be more time between shots to not be too annoying to the neighbours. It is plenty accurate enough to keep them interested. And above all, the points I've raised so far, it's fun. Hopefully, addictive fun to keep the juniors interested 
and creating our next generation into the sport and maybe, who knows, our next Olympic champions of the future. Well, I have to admit to enjoying this Diana 240 more than I thought I was going to. Hopefully you've enjoyed it too. If so, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, share, click the old notification alarm bell to be informed when the next review is out. Don't forget to join in on the forums and chats, visit the website and check out the merchandise. As always, a big thank you to the guys at Vector Air for getting hold of this one for me to review and have some serious fun with. Most of all, thank you to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. And hopefully, I'll see you next week. Stay safe and shoot safe. Bye for now.